to stimulate the cones, you need what? A lot of light, right? That means they are less sensitive to light, right? You need more light to stimulate them, excite them. You need more light. Okay. Uh, so, uh, those are the photoreceptors and their functions, okay? The three layers. <coughs> now, the iris. Iris regulates the size of the pupil because pupil is a hole inside the iris. This is the iris and this is the hole inside the iris and that is called the pupil. So you see this is the iris okay, and this is the pupil, the opening, aperture. So the iris can constrict or dilate the pupil. Make sense? So that is the function of the iris. Now you tell me if I put bright light, plenty of light, flashlight on your eye, what happens? Small. People get small, right? Constriction of people. So now if you want to see anything in dark, then people should do what? Dilate bigger, right? So more light will enter. So by regulating, we can say by regulating the size of the pupil, iris controls the amount of light. Is it clear? By regulating what? Size of the pupil. Iris regulates the amount of light enters into the eye. Now, in the iris, you have two types of fibers. This is the iris, this is the pupil. Around the pupil, you have circular fibers. Circular muscle fibers. And in the outer part of the iris, you have radial or longitudinal fibers. Radial or longitudinal. Okay. And this is the pupil. Now you see when the circular muscle fibers contract, what will happen? The pupil will get smaller. Make sense, right? Circular. Pupil will get constricted. And when circular muscle fibers relax, these muscle fibers relax and radial muscle fibers contract. So you see, these radial muscle fibers will pull the circular fibers outwards. Make sense? Like this. From all directions, you are pulling the circular muscle. Okay? So what will happen? The people will get bigger. Make sense? That's the dilation or dilatation of people. So that's why you have two types of muscle fibers. <coughs> this is uh, strongly constricted people and this is strongly dilated people. Parasympathetic stimulation constricts people. We know. If you know uh, someone pets you like this, okay? Your people get smaller. If you get scared, the people dilate. Okay? Sympathetic activation, you know, excitement, or you know, uh, you are getting scared or nervous, uh, people dilate. So, um, autonomic nerves control the people. We have talked all about all these things. This is another thing you need to know. In the retina, you have photoreceptors, rods, and cones. You see here, these are rods and these are cones. Rods are like column or rod shaped structures, cells. And cones are conical shaped photoreceptors. So uh, the shape also indicates the name. You know, uh, rods are rod-like structures, cones are cone-shaped. 
sets. Uh, you have a few other types of cells in the retina. You need to know their names. Rods and cones are two types. Those are photoreceptors. But other cells of the retina are bipolar cells, horizontal cells, amacrine cells, and ganglion cells. Remember those names too. Bipolar, horizontal, amacrine, and ganglion cells. You have these slides from our uh, blackboard. Okay. Now, these are the ganglion cells. Very important. Why? Because you see, ganglion cells are neuron type cells. So this is the cell body, this is dendrite, and this is axon. Cell body, dendrite, axon. All the axons of ganglion cells bundle together and form the optic nerve. So this is again, this is the eyeball. Uh, you remember the eyeball and the optic nerve, cranial nerve number two. Uh, so this is actually the bundle of the axons of ganglion cells. They bundle together to form the optic nerve. Okay. That gets out from the eyeball. <coughs> so just remember uh, that if I ask you, uh, the axons of which cells form the optic nerve, that's the ganglion cells, okay? Axons of ganglion cells together form the optic nerve. This is the real picture <coughs> of the retina. Uh, it's easy uh, uh, to take a picture. You know, sometimes uh, when you go to eye doctor, they put some, you know, dil uh, the pupillary dilator, the drop, that will dilate the pupil, right? So open the you know, um, pupil more, so you can take picture. The fluid is transparent, okay? And uh, this is the optic disc, no photoreceptors here. Optic nerve is attached here, as well as the blood vessels enter. So blind spot. And this is the macula lutea. And in the center, you have the fovea centralis. Where you have the cones, in high density, okay? That's why you see that area is more red. More cones are there. We have talked about this, we have talked about this. Now, the last thing. Pathway. How the visual signal is taken from the retina to the primary visual cortex in the brain. You already know now that optic nerves come out from the eyeball and two optic nerves join at the optic chiasma, like this. Two optic nerves join cross at optic chiasma, okay? And then, <coughs> divide again, optic chiasma divides into two optic tracts. So these two are optic nerves, this is optic chiasma, the joining of two nerves, and again it divides into two optic tracts. Okay. One uh, very important thing happens here, you see, in optic chiasma, some fibers stay in the same side, and some fibers go to the other side. So that is crossover. Take place in optic chiasm. So the fibers go to the other side. <coughs> From right eye, fibers go to the left side of the brain. From left eye, fibers go to the right side of the brain. That is very important. So your both sides are halves of the brain, right? Hemispheres receive signal from both eyes, which is important. Now, you see the fibers of optic tract bring the signal here in the thalamus. You know thalamus is the major sensory relay station. All of you know that, right? Major sensory relay station. So visual signal is also relayed in the thalamus. 
So optic traps bring signal into thalamus in respective side, side one. And then from thalamus, optic radiation, these fibers are called optic radiation, from thalamus to the primary visual cortex. You have seen already in the back of the brain, the occipital lobe. So let's see again, retina, optic nerve, optic chiasma, optic tract, thalamus, optic radiation to the primary visual cortex. That's the pathway. That's the pathway. Retina, optic nerve, optic chiasma, optic tract, thalamus, right? Optic radiation and primary visual cortex. Optic nerve, uh, visual depth. Perception. I talked about that right in my uh, that uh, public lecture. You remember probably some of you weren't there. So you know your why you have two eyes, not one eye. Why? To go see different angles. Slightly different location, right? If you see something with right and left eye alternate, you see it moves, right? That means your right eye sees here, left eye sees here, right? Mm -hmm. It's like two camera like about three inches apart, right? So you are taking picture. It will be a little bit different, right? So that information your brain needs to give you the depth perception, okay? And you know that with one eye, you cannot do fine depth perception discrimination. Like if I ask you to thread a needle, right? Thread a needle, uh, you won't be able to do with one eye. You need two eyes, right? To see the distance of the needle and the thread. Make sense? So uh, for that fine depth discrimination or uh, determination, you need two eyes. And that is called binocular disparity, the difference between right and left eyes. Very important to you for the brain to see the things in 3D, to see the things in shape, actual shape, and uh, distance. Make sense? To see the shape, you need to see the distance, right? Like this one is a little bit far, you know, closer than this. One, right? like you need to know. Otherwise, the shape perception will not uh, occur. Okay. So let's uh, stop here. I was going to be a doctor again, I thought.